When it comes to Pokemon, the elemental types are very important. Dare I say, it's as important to the franchise as, say, evolution. I'm sure all of you are familiar with the types Pokemon has to offer, but what if there were more? Welcome to the very first episode of my series where I sit down and take a comprehensive look at what exactly makes a type a type. There are four very important categories when it comes to a Pokemon's elemental type. If it can nail these, then there is a very high chance that it will be in the game at some point. These categories are retyped Pokemon. Obviously, you need to have a solid foundation to build off of. Type interactions. This one is very important and one that I see constantly overlooked by people. People. The amount of times that I've seen, oh, maybe we can just throw this in here, that'll sound cool. No, 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 no. We're not doing that today. We are going to take a very deep look at why type interactions will work for the sound type. And trust me, it makes a lot more sense than you might think. Future inspiration is another topic, and much like building a solid base, you need to have a solid future as well. If there isn't really any inspiration to build off of, then your type is dead in the water. And finally, moves. This category covers existing moves as well as cool inspirations for possible future moves. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and maybe grab a snack or two. Let's break down whether or not the sound type is or is not a good candidate for Pokemon. Ah yes, the sound type. Quite possibly one of the most popular picks when it comes to community engagement. But why is that? Well, as we go through the categories today, it will become increasingly obvious why that is the case. First things first, our beginning category is retyped Pokemon. Now, for this series, I have divided this section into three subsections. The first subcategory, definite picks, is fairly obvious. These are Pokemon that are pretty much guaranteed to have their type change. If, of course, sound does become a proper typing. If anything in this category doesn't get a type change, I would be incredibly surprised. And in this category, we have Cricketot and Cricketune. Makes perfect sense. They are based on crickets, which are very well known for their singing or chirping, or whatever you want to call it, as well as musical composers, and throw in a bit of violin for good measure. Of course, being just a pure bug, they would now grab the secondary typing of bug and sound. Noibat and Noivern are up next for good candidates, and it's pretty obvious to tell why. Their ears are incredibly powerful speakers. This would most likely give them the typing of sound and dragon. Flying and sound is also an option, but I highly doubt that, as they are based off of a boombox or a speaker and a wyvern, which is a kind of subset of dragons. So it makes a lot more sense if it's sound dragon. Chatot, fairly obvious here, it would become sound flying. And three that I see overlooked time and time again are Time Pole, Palpitoad, and Seismitoad, whose various Pokedex descriptions all describe them as using sound to make powerful earthquakes. Meaning that this Pokemon doesn't have control over the earth, it has control over sound, which it then uses to kind of give itself a control over the earth. And if you actually take a look at its moveset, it does actually learn quite a lot of sound based moves already. Wismer, Loudred, and Exploud. I'm sure these are the three that people always picture in their mind as soon as somebody says sound type. And as such, they make a perfect fit for a pure sound type. Both Meloetta forms are going to be sound type as well. So we have sound psychic and sound fighting, respectively. And Chingling and Chimeco. Now, I've kind of forgot to mention here, throughout this series, you will be seeing little hints, uh, sort of bits and pieces, if you will, of upcoming future episodes. And here is a perfect example. Chingling and Chimeco would be retyped from a pure psychic type to a magic and sound type, but more on magic at a later date. If you would like to hear more about the magic type, well, stick around. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, so once I actually get the video out, you'll be one of the first people to watch it. Or if you're watching this in the future, just go and click on the playlist. I'm sure I'll set one up. Anyway, so that does it for the definite picks. I'm sure most, if not all of you, have zero complaints about our selection of 15 here. But what about the possible picks category, I hear you ask? Well, when it comes to this category, they do make a lot of sense. However, there are various reasons as why why they may or may not become sound type, and I'll go through them individually, as they do tend to vary. So again, they're highly likely, but if a couple of these weren't retyped, I wouldn't be too surprised. Starting off, we have Igglybuff, Jigglypuff, and Wigglytuff. These would become sound and fairy types. 
If you've watched the anime, you know exactly why. Or I guess if you've played the games too. Anyways, point is, Jigglypuff is well known for their singing, so it makes sense as to why they are the sound type. Next, we have Primarina, and a water sound typing would make a lot of sense. However, the reason it's in the possible picks category is simply because I'm not entirely sure the Pokemon company would go around and tweak the existing starter Pokemon all that much. Our next three are Zubat, Golbat, and Crobat. These would become Poison and Sound types. The reason I put them in the possible picks category is because the flying type does make a lot of sense. Though, then again, the flying type does make a lot of sense on numerous Pokémon that aren't the flying type. Such as Flygon, or Venomon, or Volcarona, or really anything with wings. And similarly, we have the Generation 5 clones, more or less. And that would be Wubat and Subat, becoming Psychic and Sound. And finally, our tenth pick for this category is Maractus, a Pokémon that a lot of people seem to forget. This Pokémon is, yes, based on a cactus, but also on Rhythm and Maracas, hence why it's got the name Maractus. Maroc as Maractus? Anyways, you get the idea. Grass sound would make sense here. And our final subcategory is Unlikely Picks. Now, it's not exactly what you think. You might think that, hey, pretty much every Pokémon that isn't really sound-based would be unlikely. And yes, you would be correct. Though I would classify that as the no chance category. Whereas the unlikely picks means yes, they are highly unlikely, but there is a little shred of hope for them. There is a slight reasoning as to why they could become a sound type in this case. First up is Puchiana and Mightyana becoming a dark and sound type. My reason for this is just simply because of when I think of them, I think of howling. And really, that's it, to be quite frank. What did you expect? This is the unlikely picks category, after all. And our final two choices would be Whalemur and Waylord, becoming a water and sound type. All I really need to say here is whale calls. I'm sure that paints a mental picture in your mind. Or a mental sound in your mind, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, before we move on, we will go through the tally. So, for retype Pokemon, we have 15 definite picks, 10 possible picks, and 4 unlikely picks. For a total of 29 retyped Pokemon. Now, keep in mind, this total does include alternate forms as well as mega evolutions, which in this video we didn't actually cover, as there aren't really any mega Pokemon that fit too well with the sound typing. Though I'm sure we could see possibly a Mega Exploud or Mega Noivern come out of this if sound type was ever introduced and they'd still decided to do something with Mega Pokemon. So far so good, but now let's move on to type interactions. As stated in the intro, we are going to take a deep dive into why exactly the types interact the way they do. Believe it or not, there are actually pretty solid reasons as to why certain things are weak to another, though some are slightly stretched out for balancing reasons. With my descriptions, they are more of the solid reasoning, so if they did want to do some balance changes, I would understand that. But the following interactions just purely make sense from a logical standpoint. Anyway, going through this in alphabet order and, of course, throwing in some of the new types that we will be covering in the series. But yes, like I said, alphabetical order, we will start with the bug type. Some insects, such as mosquitoes, crickets, and cicadas have actually evolved the ability to hear sounds, while others, such as some moth species and mantids, are even able to perceive high-pitched noises. This is mainly used to avoid becoming an easy meal for bats. However, the majority of insect species are in fact deaf, though it's obvious that in the case for bug-type Pokémon, as commands are given verbally, they are obviously able to listen. So in the end, I'm gonna have to go with no offensive or defensive interactions with the sound type. Though if bugs did resist sound, I could understand that too. The cosmic type. In space, no one can hear you scream. Literally, as there is no medium such as air or water for the sound waves to vibrate through. This means that the sound type would have absolutely no effect on cosmic type Pokemon. Crystal type. Now, a disclaimer, I'm no physicist, so take my description here with a grain of salt. But I think the concept of resonant frequency fits perfectly with this type matchup. The basic concept is that material each have their own specific resonant frequency. If you can vibrate that object at the correct frequency, it will shatter or break. And because of this, it's pretty safe to say that sound type moves would in fact be super effective against crystal type Pokemon. 
Dark. Echo Location comes to mind when I think of this type matchup. Dark types may be able to darken the battlefield or even obscure their opponent's vision, but that doesn't matter much when you can use sound waves to sense your surroundings instead, much like how real-life bats do. For this reason, sound types should have no problem taking dark type attacks. Dragon. Well, uh, not much to say here, honestly. Mythical and powerful dragons don't really have much interactions with sound that comes to mind. But what about electric types? While there are some possible interactions here, such as things like electric guitars using electricity to amplify sound waves, I'm a little shaky on this one. I think there are some more interesting type interactions that could be used. However, electric could definitely be used as a bit of a fallback, if they ever needed it for balancing reasons. Now for the fairy type. For this, I just simply picture a quiet, peaceful gathering of fairies being spoiled by an obnoxious loud red. Fairy types seem to be all about tranquility and peace, quite the opposite of sound types, wouldn't you agree? Making fairies weak to their attacks. As for the fighting type, not sure there's much here, honestly. Neutral it is. Fire. A wave of sound could certainly push back some flames, but I guess you could say that about a lot of other things too. So mark that up for neutral interaction. And the flying type. Yeah, I got nothing. I'm sure you know what that means by now. Ghosts. They are ghosts, obviously. They're not really solid, but then again, neither are sound waves. So perhaps just a neutral interaction here would be the best. Grass. Pretty simple with this one. Real life plants don't have the ability to hear, so they would be perfectly fine with taking sound moves. And honestly, grass could probably do with another resistance. How about the ground type? Liquefaction could be an interesting concept to incorporate here. Put simply, liquefaction occurs when saturated or partially saturated soil is vibrated, causing objects sitting on top to sink down into the soil. This phenomenon is most commonly associated with earthquakes, and that's kind of the problem here, as ground types are an expert at causing them. Well, with that being said, perhaps a neutral interaction would be the best course. Onward to the ice type. Similar to the mineral crystals of the crystal type, we now have come to the ice crystals of the, well, ice type. The big difference here is that if ice is shattered, the Pokemon could probably just refreeze itself fairly easily. And we also have to take into consideration that the ice type also incorporates snow into its repertoire. And if you've ever been outside on a snowy day, you'll know just how strangely quiet it can get. This is because snow is actually a great insulator, meaning that it muffles noise. With that in mind, I think it might actually be best to have ice resist the sound type. And again, much like grass, I think that ice could definitely use this. Even more than grass, honestly. As for light? Well, light practically has no interaction with sound at all. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Now for the magic type that you've gotten a slight hint at already. Performing magic would require the memorization of spells and incantations, and it definitely would be rather difficult to do that if you're constantly being assaulted by loud noises. However, on the other hand, things like silencing spells and transformation spells come to mind, making it hard to speak or make noise. This makes sound moves great when used against magic types, but that also works the other way around too. The mushroom type. Just like grass types, mushrooms in real life don't really have much in the way of hearing, so it would follow that they should resist sound as well. Normal. Pokemon that fall under the normal type category, with some exceptions, represent the most animal-like creatures, such as cats or dogs, just to name a few. With those two examples in particular, they are well known for having fantastic hearing, and I'm sure they wouldn't be too keen on being blasted with ultra-loud noises, now would they? I'm sure you can remember back to the last time you were sick. You might have had a nasty phlegm buildup in your lung, or perhaps just a simple sore throat making it hard to talk. It's the concept of sickness that I feel why the sound type would be especially weak to poison moves. Coming into the final stretch, we have the Psychic type. Using Psychic powers, similar to the Magic type, would require a lot of mental concentration. As such, having your ears assaulted by a cacophonous racket would certainly break that level of focus. And a bit of deja vu here. On the other hand, the strange and confusing nature of the Psychic powers could easily confuse the sound type, making them mess up their vocal frequencies. This makes the sound type both super effective against and take super effective damage from the Psychic type. Rock. Now, going back to what we talked about with the crystal and the ice type, resident frequency works perfectly fine here as well. Now we finally arrive at sound itself. It should be rather obvious though that something capable of producing its own loud and powerful noises would be more than capable of taking them on themselves. 
and the steel type. Now, I know this is kind of the fourth time bringing up resonant frequency, though when it comes to steel types, I think of how thick some steel plates can get. It might take a bit too much energy to find the resonant frequency, though you still could do it. So in the end, I would say it's more of a defensive and offensive neutral interaction. And last but not least, we have the water type. While it is true that sound waves do travel more than four times faster in water than compared to air, it does take a lot more energy to get that vibration started. So I'd say those two factors kind of cancel each other out almost, meaning that a neutral interaction would be a good one here. Though similar to the electric type, I could see them doing something with water if they needed it for balance reasons. A possible weakness would be one that stands out to me. So to re Recap. When it comes to the type interactions, just focusing on the classic types as well as sound itself, the type matchups would look a little something like this. We have sound being super effective against normal, rock, fairy, and psychic types. Sound, grass, and ice types will resist sound moves. And when it comes to types that sound is unable to damage, there are in fact no types. At least when it comes to the classic setup. Its weaknesses would be poison and psychic, and it would resist sound and dark. So it's a bit of a glass cannon type. It doesn't really resist all that many types. And while it does only have two weaknesses, one of those weaknesses is something that it is super effective against. Meaning that if you ever wanted to use your sound type to attack a psychic Pokemon, you would really have to think twice. So as far as interactions with the classic types only, I'd say it's actually fairly solid. But interactions with all of the new types we will be covering in this series makes a lot more sense, and I feel it's a lot more interesting. Though, of course, perhaps a couple balance tests could be issued on this. But anyways, at least as far as what makes logical sense, we have sound being super effective against crystal, normal, rock, fairy, psychic, and magic. So again, as you can see, this is a very powerful offensive type. Much in the same way that steel is a very powerful defensive type, sound would become the powerful offensive type. Though it's not all sunshine and rainbows for the sound type, as it is resisted by itself, grass types, ice types, and mushroom types. On top of that, sound types are unable to damage cosmic types. As far as weaknesses go, it is doubled from what we saw last time with the classic types. In this case, sound would be weak to poison, cosmic, magic, and psychic, meaning that two types it's strong against, it is also weak to, and one type that it's unable to damage is super effective against it, though its resistances and immunities stay the same from what we saw last time. It's only resistant to sound and dark, with no immunities. This very much exemplifies the concept of a glass cannon type, something that we don't really have all that much. Like I said, we have the super defensive type in the steel type, but not really all that much of a super offensive type, though a super offensive type with some glaring drawbacks. I think that makes for a very, very interesting type to use in battle. But what do you think? I'm very curious to hear your feedback. With all of that out of the way, we can now move on to the next category, the inspiration for new Pokemon category. And personally, I feel it's pretty strong here. Just some examples I've come up with would be a Pokemon based on the Mandrake. If you've ever seen the Harry Potter films, I'm sure you know precisely what I'm talking about. This would be a grass and sound type, and it would probably be able to learn a fair few dark and magic moves as well. A siren would be another great fit as well. It is a mythological creature said to draw sailors in with its beautiful singing and send them to an early grave. So yeah, very pleasant there. It could either be a sound and water type or just as easily a sound and dark type. Either way, it would probably be able to learn a lot of all three of those moves. The Banshee is up next, a type of ghost known for its powerful wailing. No, not that kind of wail. Hopefully you know what I mean. But yeah, ghost and sound type would fit well here. Now one that's a little cheesy, admittedly, a rock and roll Pokemon, a rock and sound type. Yes, I know, you can roll your eyes all you want, but I think it would be kind of funny, and actually kind of cool. Another one would be something based off of radios or radio waves, and I think a Rotom form would fit perfectly here. Rotom radio, anyone? The next one is something I've kind of patted myself on the back for. And that is a hammerhead bat combined with a hammer 
tool. So yes, this would be a steel and sound type. And yes, I know there are a growing number of bat-like Pokemon, but I think this is a pretty unique bat. I mean, just look at that face. Take a look at that and tell me that could not be a steel-coated hammer of death. Iron Head would work perfectly here. Now here's something I've actually been thinking of pretty much ever since it was announced. If you'll remember back to the beta art leak of Pokemon Gold version, you might remember these little guys. What I like to call the beta wolf pelt Pokemon. And if the sound type was ever introduced, I could absolutely see them bringing this design back and repurposing it as a sound and ice type. Sort of like an arctic wolf kind of thing, although it's just wearing an arctic wolf pelt. Although it probably doesn't actually wear it, and it just sort of looks like it to scare predators. Anyway, I'm not going through the design here, that's not what I'm here to do. But yes, sound and ice would fit well for that reason. And a slight cop out here, but literally any musical instrument ever. So a sound and, well, anything type, really. I'm sure they could do some very cool things. And before you say, oh, we don't need any more inanimate object Pokemon, remember, Exploud is based off of a loudspeaker and a pipe organ, and it certainly doesn't look like an inanimate object, now does it? And that's it for my ideas, but if you have any ideas of your own, let me know in the comments down below. And finally, we come to the last section, and that is the moves section. So we have retype moves and new moves. Starting us off with the retype moves, we have far too many to even cover. I mean, I could, but I don't think you want this video to be even longer than it already is. So, just to name a couple examples off the top of my head, we've got Echoed Voice, Boom Burst, Yawn, Sing, Chatter, and Confide, just to name some. Uh, another one comes to mind, Growl, that could work too. But yeah, you get the point here. There are a ton of already existing sound moves in the game, and there are even some that could be given the flying press treatment, such as Bug Buzz. It could deal both bug and sound type damage. As for new moves, I think sound type is by far the most interesting type when it comes to new move possibilities. One of those is a perfect example. Skyquake. This is a move based off of the mysterious Serious phenomenon known as, get ready for it, the Skyquake. Yes, the move is named directly after it. So, this move could be the signature move of the Noivern line, and perhaps deal both sound and flying type damage, or maybe sound and dragon type damage. Either one would work. Though thematically it would make sense if it was flying, however, because Noivern is now a sound and dragon type, it could also make sense as a dragon type move, especially if it is the signature move of that Pokemon. So my little in-game description of it would read something along these lines. A powerful move that deals both sound and flying type damage. It is also able to hit targets in the air. So basically Pokemon that are using fly or bounce on the turn when they're up in the air, they will still be hit by Skyquake. Another one I've come up with would be Lullablade. So it's Lullaby plus Blade. I mean, that name could also work for a Pokemon, but I think it would make for a really cool move. And here's why. So, it is a physical sound move, which we'll definitely need more of if sound were to become a type. It is known by the Cricketune line, as well as a few others. So, skillfully slashing with blades or claws, the user plays a tune while doing so, meaning that there would be a chance that the target could fall asleep. A fairly powerful move, but it probably wouldn't have full accuracy, and like I said, it's only learnt by Cricketoon and a few others, so it's kind of balanced out in that regard. Though it would be a very powerful buff to Cricketoon. Certainly not enough to make it viable, but enough to give it a little bit of a boost. And, you know, to make it stand out a bit more. Now, with the plethora of frog and toad-based Pokemon that seem to be coming out over the years, I think one that would fit very well is the move Croak. So, as I implied, this move is known by all frog and toad-based Pokemon. But obviously, Seismitoad and its evolution line are the best users of this move due to their sound typing. It is a move similar to Charge Beam, so when you're using it, there is a high chance it will boost a stat. In this move's case, it will boost your special defense stat, rather than Charge Beam's special attack raise. The reason I chose special defense 
sense is because, much like how frogs seem to constantly be croaking, this move could inspire your Pokémon to create a sort of shield of sound, so to say, dampening incoming attacks. The more they use croak, the stronger this sound barrier would become. It's not really an actual barrier, it's just simply a stat raised to your special defense stat. But thematically, I think that does make quite a lot of sense, and it would make for a pretty cool signature-ish move. Now, come to think of it, the first three I've talked about are signature or semi-signature moves. However, the last one is learnt by a lot more Pokémon. Even a lot of non-sound-type Pokémon can learn this move. Some non-sound types that come to mind would be Hariyama and Electrovire. Basically anything with large, powerful hands, because the move is Thunderclap. Now, to get a bit of a definition going, it is defined as either the sound of crashing thunder, aka the sound of it, not the actual electric energy. It's also described as something startling or unsuspected. So taking those into account, I've also combined that with the act of actually physically clapping your hands together. And this would make for a rather strong physical sound move. Again, something we will definitely need. And dipping back into the whole startling and unsuspected aspect, this could have a chance to flinch the target. Or perhaps we could go the other route and sort of take in the thunder part of it. So instead of flinching, it could maybe have a small chance to paralyze instead. Now, while that is just a taste of what we could have, I could definitely see a lot more very awesome and unique sound-based moves. I'm sure there would have to be a lot of lower tier sound moves as well, though there are a few of those already in existence. What I mean by that is basically something that a low-level sound type would learn. Something akin to Water Gun or Ember, but, you know, a sound-based variant of that. Now, before we wrap it up, let's take a look at what we've gone through and give everything a score out of five. Now, out of all four of these categories, they are actually weighted a little bit differently. There are bonus points, shall we say, to being good in a certain category. So, the most important, to me at least, is retyped Pokémon. If the Pokémon company has nothing to build off of, a type is never gonna happen. Or rather, has an incredibly slim chance of happening. This is why this one awards the most bonus points, if your score is high enough. The second most important is possible future inspiration, for obvious reasons. If they introduce a new type, and then they can't really make anything believable out of it, well then, they're dead in the water. And type interactions and moves. While these are also incredibly important, they are slightly less important than the other ones. Hence why these will be awarded no bonus points. Without further ado, first up is the retyped Pokémon category. With the sheer amount of Pokémon that already exist and fit perfectly well into this category, I am giving this a 5 out of 5. This also awards two bonus points for having such a high score. Just as an aside here, these weighted values will be exactly the same across the board for all of the types we will be covering in this series. Meaning that no, it's not just a random number I pulled out of somewhere. Anyway, next section is the type interactions. While the classic interactions could use a few tweaks, remember, we did leave room for possible water and electric interactions as well. And on top of that, taking all types in this series into consideration, I would say that it makes for a very interesting type to use in combat, with a lot of strengths and also a lot of weaknesses too. But it's the kind of weaknesses that are fun to play around with. At least, I think so. Anyway, the next section, possible future inspirations. I'm giving this section a 4 out of 5. The reason I'm docking one point from this is because I feel they might end up relying too heavily on musical instruments for inspiration. Though then again, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but still, the 4 out of 5 still stands. And because of that, 0.75 bonus points are awarded here. And last but not least, moves. This one should be the most fresh in your mind, hopefully, because I assume you've been paying attention, and this was the most recent category we talked about. But yeah, a 5 out of 5 makes absolutely perfect sense. You have a huge array of existing moves to retype, and you have a lot of very interesting and very cool moves that you could add to the game as well. So, our total is 19 out of 20 points, but with our bonus points taken into consideration, we have a 21.75 
out of 20. Meaning that, at least in my opinion, the sound type is pretty much inevitable. Though something to keep in mind while watching this series, these scores at the end are only applicable if Game Freak actually want to add a new type. So what I'm saying here basically is if Game Freak is like, hey, we should add a new type to the game, then that means the doors are open and sound is a very, very likely candidate in that case. And there we have it. That will wrap up this video. However, there are more types that I will be discussing. So stay tuned for all of those videos. Make sure you subscribe and you will never miss any of these upcoming type videos. Also, supposedly I'm supposed to tell you to hit the bell too. That's another thing. Kind of annoying thing, but still a thing nonetheless, because YouTube is very weird sometimes. But anyway, with that, I of course have been the awesome soul. I thank you all so very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.